<laughs> yeah. That might go in the video. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, today the weather's great, so we are going to test the air shuttles out, do a full review, and today we have got a special guest with me. So, got Paul, who is gonna help me with the review and be my hitting partner on this video. If you've not seen the previous unboxing video and giveaway announcement, please do check it out. I will link it somewhere on here. I would like to thank Airshuttle.one for very kindly providing me with these air shuttles. They are the first web shop in the world dedicated to air shuttle and air badminton and it's also a BWF air shuttle distributor. They currently have them in stock and provides free shipping to selected countries and they ship internationally too. So please visit the website linked in the description below for more information. So the only two things I checked out before doing the review was the weather and it was the area required to play or the court size and here you can see me trying to mark out the court size on the field and Paul here showing the distances we had in between each marker. We brought feather and plastic shuttles with us to compare with the air shuttle for this review. Paul and I started hitting with the feather shuttles to establish a baseline for feel and response and quickly felt the feather shuttle was providing a good feeling and natural flight. However, it was too easily influenced by any form of draft or gust making it very hard to play with, so overall not a good experience. Secondly, we went on to the plastic shuttles. The plastic shuttles felt like uh, faster but then died or slowed down quicker due to the design of the skirt. It was also again very easily influenced by the wind and perhaps moved even more in comparison to the feather shuttle, so it was again not a good experience. Finally, we went on to the air shuttle. Right off the bat, the shuttle felt very fast as it doesn't slow down anywhere near as much as the feather or the plastic shuttle. This is probably due to being heavier than the other two as well as having a lower drag design with a significant amount of hollow areas around the five stems of the air shuttle. Um, although getting into rallies isn't a problem, both Paul and I felt that we had to retime how we were hitting the shuttle. So after agreeing the air shuttles behave slightly differently to normal shuttles, we decided to do a serve test to check out how much different they were. So I served three of each type of shuttle with a high serve and checked out where they landed. As you can see here, the feather shuttles landed closest to me and the air shuttles landed furthest away, confirming our initial theory of the air shuttles feels slightly faster than normal shuttles. We also do have to take into account the draft or the gust of the wind that was acting on the shuttles. So here I'm showing a side view um, where I was looking from, where the spread of the shuttles were during outdoor play. A normal shuttlecock design is inherently high drag but aerodynamically stable. So the, so the weight at the cork will always enable the shuttle to turn and travel in a cork first orientation regardless of when it is hit. And also the conical shape of the shuttle um, it makes it behave like a high drag projectile. So because the arrangement of the feathers, the arrangement of the feathers or the skirt of a shuttle, it makes it spin. So it makes it spin when it's traveling. So this means it increases its stability and that's why it should be stable if this is done correctly. And this is also the same for the air shuttle. To show, verify and compare the difference in design as well as drag levels exhibited by a normal plastic and air shuttle, here I have a shuttle tube taped to the side of a workbench to act as a wind tunnel. I put the hairdryer fan speed into one and have the shuttle turned upside down into the direction of the wind similarly to how a shuttle would travel once it's been struck. Here you can see the feather and plastic shuttles drag causing the shuttle to lift off the tube slightly whilst trying to stabilize itself whilst in comparison the air shuttles stay sat onto the tube even with me completely shoving the hairdryer into the shuttle tube. This is due to significantly lower drag design implemented onto the air shuttle, allowing enough air coming through the tube to escape. Now, I turn the hairdryer fan speed up and this is a significant increase in fan speed and it finally has enough air speed to cause the drag from the air shuttle to react. Here is another angle of the experiment in slow motion. Paul 
Paul, being a super amazing coach, did bring a badminton net with him, so we quickly set up the net before continuing. Instantly, we felt the quality of the game improve significantly, so we were no longer just aimlessly driving, pushing, or just hitting the shoulder to each other. We are now trying to move each other all around the court into empty spaces. Not necessarily using power shots, but try, just trying to control the shuttle and move each other around. The wind definitely still played a part in our game and occasional misses due to last minute gusts of wind, but we were able to get into rallies no problem. And we even tried a few games of singles too. Durability wise, we had no issues after playing with the air shuttles for more than two hours, rotating between three shuttles. Small signs of wear and tear in the skirts of the air shuttles, but nothing major. Additionally, we also brought extra rackets, which were strung, lower in tension, and I certainly felt a significant difference. I generally play with tensions around 27, 28 pounds, but these lower tension rackets were no more than 20 pounds and played great with the air shuttle. So this is due to the cork of the air shuttle being completely solid and the skirt and stem also being a lot stiffer in comparison to a normal feather or plastic shuttle. So the lower tension in strings helped provide you with slightly more comfort as well as more control. So not a bad combo, especially when playing outdoors. So the important takeaway here is you do not use a slow shuttle in cold weather. This is similar, we should not be treating the air shuttle as if it was a feather shuttle. It is not. We cannot expect an outdoor shuttle with a different design philosophy to behave exactly like an indoor shuttle. However, I see this as a good product, a good product to potentially introduce more players to enjoy some form of badminton outdoors, or as a route into badminton itself. This is certainly as a ledger product and not intended for match play or international competitions. I mean, you could, um, but let's leave that for another day. Um, the air shuttle gave me the best playing experience outdoor thus far. Um, within somewhat ideal outdoor conditions, I have to add. I do look forward to better incremental designs in the future, with better ability to withstand higher wind speeds and so on. Until then, we've got this guy. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and give it a thumbs up as it helps grow the channel. Um, please leave a comment down below on what you think about the air shuttle. Um, also, make sure you comment to have a chance to win two of these. I will be picking two winners from the comments section down below, which I will send them an air shuttle each. Share, like and subscribe this video to make sure you have a chance of winning the air shuttle. Please do so you'll be notified of the announcement of the giveaway winners um, a week after this video is published. See you next time.